back in 2020 i like thousands of other people moved to mexico and i absolutely loved it the food the culture the people everything was absolutely fantastic i was on cloud nine until i wasn't and i think there is something very important that most people don't ever talk about and in this video we're going to be talking about how i had the worst year of my life while living in mexico culture shocks i think a lot of people think oh i'm not going to be affected by culture shocks i'm fine i love change I can tell you from my own personal experience that culture shock is a real thing and it is something to think about before you decide to make the move to Mexico. So if you don't already know our story, Giovanni and I were working in the Cayman Islands. We had been there for four years and then we got to March of 2020 and you guys all know what happened. COVID-19. And when I say we literally had four days between losing our jobs and saying, oh, we are going to have to leave and move to Mexico. That was really our only option and arriving in Cancun International Airport, four days, it might have been five days, I don't know. The point of the matter is we didn't have any time to like think about it. The other times that I had moved to other countries, I had time to mentally prepare for it. You know, I knew what was coming. Those kind of just all came at once. My life got flipped, turned upside down. But anyways, when you first move to a country, from my experience, you experience the honeymoon phase, which it absolutely was. When we first moved here, I was like, wow, everyone is so lovely. And, you know, we were trying all these new foods that I had never tried before. And I loved how everyone stayed up so late and we could go walk outside at 10 o'clock at night and go find street food and I loved all the music all all over the place and I thought people were very friendly and it was just a really good time I would say for the first almost year that we were here. Hey? Yeah I think I also experienced that phase in, in my own way in like oh I'm just showing her my country and she's like oh wow like a novelty. Yes. And then it was very very nice for me seeing her enjoying it because I think it's what you expect when you when you have a, a visitor or you have someone who is not from your town or even more not from your country seeing her so flabbergasted with the things like wow like very impressed after those initial few months in mexico where everything was just sunshine and rainbows everything was positive everything was exciting we got the opportunity to go back to south africa which was Giovanni's um, first time in South Africa and something that we just need to explain about South Africa although Mexico and South Africa are both developing countries if I had to directly compare the two countries South Africa is a lot closer to a developed country in terms of our infrastructure in terms of our lifestyle we're very used to luxury we're very used to having beautiful buildings and beautiful restaurants and roads roads just everything is so much more beautiful in south africa in terms of infrastructure and lifestyle just as a side note with that in terms of like social socioeconomic levels here in the country comparing with south africa like our mid class compared with the south african class it's it's so different there's a like huge huge disparity. huge huge gap in that so we cannot compare apples to apples because it's not what i've realized is middle middle upper class in south africa is upper class here in mexico so how we live now in mexico is what you would consider lower class socioeconomically in south africa so anyways the point that i'm trying to make with us going to south africa is i hadn't been in a while so going to south africa and being reminded of wow it's so beautiful and you know people really do live a very luxurious lifestyle in south africa um coming back to Mexico in 2021 it really started to hit me that wow I actually am in a very different environment a di very different way of living and that's where I really started to like get frustrated I would say that's when I entered the frustration phase when we first started planning this video I started to list out like the cultural shocks and there was a good mix of positive and negative cultural shocks but I eventually realized, you know, we could sit and list out all these culture shocks, which you guys have probably heard a million times before, but we really wanted to center this video around the one thing that really truly affected me in terms of culture shock. And that would be not having a community. So basically, we're not going to like get too deep into it, but by the 
end of 2021 I, I started to go through something very very difficult in my personal life um and then by the beginning of 2022 it got really bad and i think it was at that time that i that i realized i don't have friends i don't have a community here in mexico and yes it is my fault that i that i'm not able to speak spanish um don't get me wrong i can i can get by like Giovanni sends me out into the wild all the time and i, and I can communicate on a transactional level you know we speak with our neighbors we speak with the people in the dog park and you know it's very transactional very surface level stuff Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, I can't my life, thank you. That period was the probably the hardest part of my the hardest experience of my life because of what I was going through in my personal life. But you know, I had been through some very heavy, difficult stuff in the past, but of the three other countries that I had lived in outside of South Africa, I I was living in English speaking countries so you know I, I always had that core group of friends you know very close friends that I could trust that I could go to that I you know I felt supported by so on top of going through in 2021 2022 a little bit of 2023 going through the hardest time of my life I realized like Giovanni is there physically and I, don't get me wrong I've got the most incredible beautiful friends on this planet but literally every single one of them lives in a different country and although I was able to to know to communicate to them online it's not the same thing as having that community Physical, it, yeah. physically to be able to physically go with someone for a coffee and then I think that's where I really realized I don't know if I was like living on another planet you know not really realizing that at some stage I am going to be a, I am going to have to get fluent in Spanish if I want to make Mexico work for me, if I want to make it a permanent home. And speaking about moving to Mexico, Giovanni and I combined our almost four years of living here together. A lot more living before 15. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, into a very comprehensive ebook. It's over a hundred pages of everything you need to know, you guys. How to set up your Wi-Fi, how to pay your bills. We go more in depth with the culture shocks, how to move around. There's just so much valuable information in there that is designed to make your move to, to Mexico, specifically to the region of Quintana Roo easier. So if you want to check that out, you can find it in the description or you can go to our website for the roadtravels.com. When you think of Playa Carmen or just this region of Mexico, there are a ton of English speakers here. A lot of the people that are of our age kind of like doing the same kind of like online online work you know this does know man yeah, yeah pursuing the same sort of lifestyle are here on a very transactional type of tra sorry not transactional on a very transient, transient type of basis and i'm i'm a super empath uh, empath or well, that as well but i'm a super introvert to begin with um so you know for me i'm not willing to like go to all of these expat um immigrants meetups to meet people that i'm going to you know have one coffee with and they never see them again like i want those core friendships that are going to be around for a long time so knowing that the the english speaking community here was very much of a tra transient nature i never really immersed myself into that community but it was right around this time that i realized wow like Moving to Mexico has been a lot more difficult than what I originally anticipated and I don't know why but I just completely overlooked the 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 fact of having to become fluid in Spanish in order to have those very deep meaningful connections and relationships. Yes, in the beginning I tried to teach her but you know there's people who is good at teaching things and but teaching languages also sometimes comes from the receiver. Yeah. And my, my way to teach is not it's not the right way for her, so I kind of got frustrated too. Mi ano fue hermoso. Año means year, ano means anus. Yeah, both, both of us got yeah. frustrated, yeah. Estoy trabajando muy duro 
para hablar más fluido. Impressive. Sí. Impressive. <laughs> Transactionally, I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, I speak to the people in the dog park, I speak to our neighbors, I speak to the lady at the fruteria. You know, I'm fine with that. But when it comes to, to speaking another language, you've got transactional, which is what's going to get you by. But then you've got conversational, which is what is going to allow you to develop those core relationships that are going to develop into your community. And community is so important. As an introvert, I kind of always overlooked having a community, thinking, oh, I'm fine, I'm independent, I've got my friends online overseas. But it was during this time in my life that I realized, no, like physical community is absolutely essential. I would say probably 2023 is kind of where I entered the, the adaptation phase. And I would say it had the, the delay in me getting to the adaptation phase had a lot to do with my mental state and, you know, just the anxiety and depression that came with oh, great. Okay. That, that came with what I was dealing with in my personal life. So if I'm being completely honest, I kind of am falling into the acceptance adaptation phase. I kind of teeter between the two with the acceptance phase of us, you know, being able to talk about our long-term goals for Mexico and us wanting to build a dream house one day and to raise children here and stuff like that. That's what makes me feel like positive about our future in Mexico. Knowing that the key to me actually enjoying and making the most of my move to Mexico is becoming conversational in Spanish so that I can have that community because also it, it's one of our biggest dreams to have children and we can't bring children onto this planet and not have a community here in Mexico. Yeah, at the, at, at the, uh, you, they, they would have to speak both languages and of course mainly, mainly Spanish. Yeah. But I think also we'll start from, from leading with example. Considering that community is a vital part of, you know, health, your mental and emotional health, um, and just knowing that the commitment to having to become conversational, fluid in a new language, it, it has to be there. I think a lot of people move to, to Mexico thinking, oh yeah, I'll learn a bit of Spanish, but it goes deeper than that. Unless you are one of the people that just wants to be friends with all the other immigrants, specifically here in, in, in this region, knowing that that community is also not very stable, that is very much the transient. transient yeah. Um, but also, you know, when you're moving to a new country, why do you want to be friends with everyone that is not from that country? I think it's kind of like an insult to yourself to and not to, want to, to integrate and to adapt. And not only to yourself, if not to the to the country where you're living in because I think one of the things of moving to a different country is the adaptation of uh, of the culture or and meeting people and that means the language, the culture, the, the, the customs. I just don't want you guys to take this wrong. I don't hate Mexico. I don't hate my time in Mexico. I just wanted to share something very personal in the hopes that you are more mentally prepared to make the move to Mexico. It's not as simple as just getting on a flight. There's a lot more that comes with that. I love how important family is as a core of the culture. I love how friendly the people are, of course, and the street food culture. And there is so much that I love about Mexico. And I really look forward to my remaining years in Mexico, which is hopefully a very long time where I can really, really integrate by becoming fluent in Spanish. So hopefully we'll be making a recap of this video this time next year. So November, 2024, and I'm, speaking a lot more in espanol correcto <laughs> um yeah so that's i think all we have for you guys today yeah i think we can as you say we can list all of the cultural shops that you can find here like the garbage the the, the bureaucracy that is very slow x y street, street dogs the noise yeah but also I think cultural shocks can be either positive or negative also it's how you take them mm -hmm. but this is the experience of Simone of how this is how this has been her biggest cultural cultural shock mm -hmm. while living here in Mexico so yeah a huge thank you to everyone who supports us via buy me a coffee if you are thinking of moving to Mexico Giovanni and I have been living here for almost four years like we mentioned earlier in the video we created a 
complete thorough guide on everything you need to know before you move here we would really recommend going and checking out our website for theroadtravels.com and pick up a copy of that yeah i think if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give us a big thumbs up subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed to our channel and that being say we'll see you in the next episode hasta, hasta luego, luego.